Hi there, I'm Bonnie Saratori with Spiritual Acceleration. And I wanna talk about energy cords, what they are, okay? So first, let's, I wanna talk about energy cords coming into the first chakra. But first, what is an energy cord, okay? An energy cord comes between different people. It can, you can actually have energy cords with multiple people for different reasons. But basically what happens is, is we all send out cords. It's an energy frequency. It comes from a desire, a need, a want, uh, hoping, wishing, that kind of thing. It's an emotional energy. Let's just say, for example, that I, I want my mom to you know, love me, okay, because I'm not feeling loved by my mom. So let's just say she got mad at me or whatever. And so what happens is my desire, my need for my mom to love me, which everybody has, then because I don't speak it, I don't say clearly, mom, I'm feeling like you're not loving me right now. I'm, I'm feeling a little lost. I need, I want to feel your love. Okay. We don't speak like that. I mean, some people might, but not very many. We hold it back and we have these feelings and desires. What happens is, is that we will send out an energy cord that can go right into that first chakra because the first chakra deals with the life, death, survival. This is the, the stuff around being loved, being cared for, being protected. So we can send out an energy cord that will go right into that first chakra of my mother, okay? Because I'm not able to speak what I'm feeling because sometimes I don't really know what it is. I'm in an emotional state. I'm just having a need, a desire, and I don't know how to articulate it. And so unconsciously, it's not like we're intentionally sending a cord. Sometimes we can. I'll address that in a moment. But it's an accord, an energy, energetic desire, a need, a want for my mom, to connect with my mom. Okay. So I'll send a cord out in that life death survival, because it feels like survival if my mom doesn't love me, okay? It feels like I'll die. So I'll send that cord, a hook right into her first chakra. And now we're hooked in, in that survival chakra, okay? So now what happens is I'm pulling on her energy. She doesn't understand what I'm doing. She doesn't even know that's happening. But now she's feeling a little, little unstable in her own world. And now she's starting to find herself feeling even more worried about me, more concerned about me, and doesn't even know why, okay? That's because we have courted. I've courted into her. Now she can court into me because now she's feeling, you know, worried about me. So now her fear and worry, she'll send a cord right into me, okay? So now we got two cords coming in, both coming into each other's first chakra, and we're pulling on that life, death, survival strings that we, you know, we, that we want to help each other. We have fear and it causes even more fear, causes more anxiety because we are not expressing clearly. We've now corded in, hooked in, and now we're, we're caught, we're bound to one another. The thing is, people, cords just don't go away when we die. We can still maintain cording, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've seen people courted from past lives, you know, in situations where um, someone's, you know, needing help, support or feeling afraid or feeling insecure, and they'll cord right into somebody else that they feel, you know, is stronger than them or, you know, maybe a, you know, a parent or loved one, doesn't matter, but we cord into each other. So here's the thing, we're always cording in, but the thing is, is cords start to drain our energy. Cords affect us. Like what I said, I, pour, I cord into my mom. She feels my distress. She doesn't know that I've corded into her. No words have been spoken. But what happens is all of a sudden she just has this feeling of fear, a worry, a concern, a stress. And now she's worried. And that emotion will send a cord right into me, into that first chakra. Okay. So cording into that first chakra is about things like Take care of me, save me, protect me. I need you. Okay. That's what we're doing when we cord into somebody in that first chakra or someone cords into us. We might find ourselves feeling 
like we have a friend even, like we got a friend, let's say our, our friend cords in that for chakra because they're going to, there's some financial distress, some concern, maybe they have to move out to have a place to move. So their, their security, their, you know, the foundation of life, death, survival is being activated. So they have that energy. They could be courting to many people trying to find some kind of security. Okay, so they cord into you. You don't know that's happening, but all of a sudden you find yourself worrying about that person, wanting to do something to help them, to take care of them, to save them, because it's hitting your unconscious wounding, which is what happens. We do all these energy dances when we cord in, but basically that first chakra really is about, I need help. Somebody save me. Okay, life, death, survival. Think what that means when we're in a survival, where we're concerned and worried about our well-being. Maybe we're worried about eating, feeding our families. Maybe we're worried about shelter, clothing, protection, okay? Survival, survival, survival is intense. Life and death, dying, life, death, threatened, afraid, terrified, okay? Feeling stressed. We reach out energetically with these cords and we hook in. We can hook in anywhere in the body, but I'm going for a chakra right now, which is literally life, death, survival issues, so according into these areas, we anchor in and then everyone gets a little wonky. No one's understanding what's happening. This is the unspoken word that we're feeling, but it doesn't reach our conscious mind that this is what's happening. So when people cord into us, we might feel some energy in that, that lower chakra, that center that's like at the base of the spine, okay, at, in our body down at the base of the spine, um, that chakra. And... When people cord in, we feel it, and then we start to get a little anxious or a little wonky. We, we start to have concern and worry about somebody. So when you find that happen, it's a good possibility someone has corded into you. Your kids can do it. Your parents can do it. Your lovers can do it. Your Anybody, anybody, okay? Anybody, even you know, like even, for example, you could meet somebody and they just seem like they're very strong and stable and you don't even know them. And you want what they have, or you want feel that security, you can cord right into them. Okay. So when that happens, we start to feel the people's energy. We can feel some of their anxiety. We start to feel some of their stressors and worries and concerns. We don't know what's happening. We think it's us, but it's not. Okay. So when we start disengaging these cords, whoa, the body begins to relax. The belly relaxes because that's that whole area of that first chakra. And then the worry and concern about the person or people that we've been thinking about, it just mellows out and softens. And we somehow just feel like all is well, okay? So courting in, it's not that it's a bad thing. I mean, the really the place where we, where we can court in where it would be more appropriate would be the heart. But, you know, people when we're in stress or we're in, in destitution or feeling anxious or afraid or fearful and we're in survival, you know, we're desperate. We're going to cord in to anybody. <laughs> Anchor in, help me, save me, protect me. I'm afraid I'm going to die. Okay. And then we feel that energy. Okay. But it's like, until we understand that that cording is not really appropriate, everyone's going to still do it. In fact, most people don't even know about cords. Okay. Mainstream consciousness has no clue about cording into one another. It's only when you start, you know, delving into higher consciousness and who we really are and, and as a being that you start discovering, you know, the issue around cording. So those cords, they, they can be little tiny little spaghetti thread, like little, even like little hairs, you know, thin, 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 or they can be huge. I've seen cords that were like huge coming into people. Okay. So depending on the size of that cording is going to affect you deeply, profoundly. So if someone's got a major cord like this, save me, save me, save me. And that hits your energy. That hits your first chakra. You're going to get whacked. You're going to feel unstable. You're going to feel like your whole world is rocked. Okay. Because you're now feeling their energy. Think, keep in mind when those cords come into the body, whatever those emotional energies are that the person is sending those cords with, you're going to feel it, but you're not going to know it's not you. You're going to think it's you. Oh, my word. I'm just feeling so nervous. I'm so anxious. I'm so concerned. I'm so worried. Okay. Not yours. Okay? So when we disengage and, and release cording, then again, the body, wow. It's like 
wow, why was I feeling that way? That was really weird, you know? You don't understand because you don't know about courting, okay? So that first chakra, life, death, survival, big one. So when we have cords courting in there, again, we're going to feel other people's stuff. We're going to feel, you know, whatever their fears and anxieties and worries and stresses are, and we won't know that it's not us, okay? but we can suspect it when something happens kind of suddenly. Let's just say that you know, you're all, you think you're in life, you're doing, you're playing, you're working, doing your thing. And all of a sudden you have an anxiety. It's like, whoa, why, what? Nothing's happened. I don't know where this is coming from. That's a red flag that someone has corded into you. Okay. You can remove these cords. Now, remember, we have agreements on all levels, but we're not always aware of these agreements. So on some level, you've agreed to allow someone to cord into you. Okay. It's only when we start becoming aware that we have choice and that we don't have to let people court into us that we can start saying and claiming sovereignty over our own body, over our lives, where we're no longer willing to allow anybody to court into us. Okay. But we have to understand that. We have to know that. Otherwise, we're just going to feel like I don't know what's happening. I just feel all this anxiety, this worry, stress. I don't know what's happening. I don't know where it's coming from, but this is what I'm feeling. Okay, so when you start understanding that when you start having these kinds of experiences, oh, someone could be courting into me. And here's what's cool. If you start feeling into the area where you're feeling the courting, where you're feeling the anxiety or, or energy frequencies, oftentimes you're going to get a sense of who it is because they're plugged right into you and they pulled your energy into them through that cord. Now, you can also be sending a cord to them because maybe you're worried and concerned about their survival, okay? Now we got two cords going. You can then, then, and you could be sending to other people as well. But basically, courting in is not how we wanna communicate. Courting in is not what we wanna be doing to one another. Like for example, I wouldn't want my mother to feel the stresses of me, of whatever anxiety or worries or stress I've got. But if I plug into her with my first chakra cord, hit her first chakra, I'm going to whack her. She's going to feel something. She's not going to know what's up. And she's going to get worried and concerned about me. It might even activate her own survival issues. So having our cords disengaged, we can feel it. We can pull them out. We can let people know you cannot cord into me. We can pull our cords back with intention. Like if we know who we've corded into, we can make it really clear. All right, I can feel I've corded into my mother and I'm no longer willing to do that. I'm pulling this cord back. You can feel it. It's an actual physical sensation that you can feel when you've corded in. So we start pulling our cords back in, pulling back into our body, and then we stay with our own selves, feel whatever we're experiencing. And then we deal with it at that level rather than save me, save me, someone protect me, save me. Okay. First chakra, life, death, survival. So if you've got cords in there, it's going to make you feel unstable. You're going to have anxiety. You're going to be stressing even more about finances, living situations, food situations, the, the energy of the world. You're going to be more stressed out by watching what's happening in the world because you're seeing people in crisis. You're feeling, seeing people in life, death, survival. So it's going to hit your energy. But when you are stable, then it allows for you to be more centered, more balanced, and you can make different, clearer choices and decisions, not based on trauma, trauma, I'm in survival, okay? So we want to stay calm. We want to stay centered. We want to be, you know, authentically who we are without getting whacked because of someone cording into us. So cords are actually inappropriate. We don't want them. So again, if you're feeling or suspecting someone's corded into you, you can hold them in your awareness and just say, this, uh, yeah, I'm done. We're no longer courting. I no longer allow you to court into me. I'm not courting into you. And I'm pulling my cord back into me. I'm sending your cord back to you. And just stay, stay within your own self. Stay in your own energy field. I'm no longer willing to save you, protect you, care for you, make everything all right. So remember, first shock recording can be very intense, very uncomfortable, and it's going to affect you negatively. All right. So we want to not have cords happen and we want to be disengaged, okay? Again, the only appropriate place to cord would be through the heart, which we'll talk about at another time.
So hopefully you can have a little information, a little under, better understanding of courting, how it can affect you and what's happening for someone else who is literally feeling distressed. So we cord into each other. Save me, save me, not. So actually I have a great clearing to help with that first chakra. And it is in the chakra series. It is the first chakra. It is that, you know, the, the chakra that we hold all that energy, life, death, survival, first chakra, okay? And it's the root chakra. So the clearing, group clearing is root chakra, first chakra. So you want to get in on that one and clean up all the wounding in there so people have nothing to cord into. Even if they tried, there'd be nothing to cord into. How cool is that? 